Hi. Please. Thank you for the inf uh, organizing committee that invited me to talk about the, uh, this topic. Okay. Actually, it's the bad, but uh, okay. I, I will do my best. Okay. Uh, the topic is the best often treatment for multiple myeloma. Actually, I don't uh, act, uh, act as a, a pro-curative approach, but actually is uh, 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 give you the idea that the road toward a cure in multiple myeloma, how to do is okay? Uh, this is the main uh, idea of treatment of multiple myeloma. Uh, most of the uh, most of people in the my, my, my myeloma think that uh, the treatment of multiple myeloma actually is incurative, okay? Because the disease progress, and after treatment, the disease uh, reduced into plateau phase and then relapse again. And after treatment, for many times, the disease progress and then it's a refractory disease, and the patients die. So, and. But as Dr. Kosubes said, that there is a progress in the treatment of multiple myeloma in the past 40 years. With the introduction of the myeloabrative autologous stem cell transplantation and the use of novel agents, that caused uh, the hope in the treatment of multiple myelomas. And the new drug is going to be released into the market. Many drugs as, uh, as revealed, okay? Uh, this happened because we know the pathophysiology and the cause of multiple myeloma. The cytogenetics change and the mutations in the my myeloma cells together with the dysregulation of cyclone oncogenes and other tumor suppressor genes, the decrease in immunosuppression and the failure of the immune surveillance to control the, uh, the tumors. This events lead to uncontrolled tumor cell growth. And we know the interaction of multiple myeloma cells and the bone marrow microenvironment. And there are a lot of pathways, and many drugs are targeting at this pathway also. So in this case, numerous drugs, uh, some drugs are targeting the multiple myeloma cells, okay, and some drug was developed to target uh, to the bone marrow environment. Also, and many drugs are targeting both. Okay. The current concept of frontline treatment in multiple myeloma is that uh, we choose the, uh, we evaluate whether the patient is a candidate for symptom transplantation or not. And then if the patient is a transplant eligible, we induction uh, the patient into the complete remission whether by the use of novel agents either by the potassium based or the emit based and then go on to the stem cell transplantation with high dose melphalant and evaluate the patient if, in, uh, if the patient is in more than a uh, very good uh, PR. Okay, sometimes we uh, give no treatment or consolidation uh, of the patient according to the protocol of the institution. But for the transplant ineligible patients, we evaluate whether the patient is fit or frail. If the patient is elderly and frail, we use the optimal treatment uh, that is uh, suitable for the patients. And if the patient is fit, okay, we can give him more aggressive treatment. But because the patient has some comorbidities, we have to uh, optimally select the appropriate drugs. The changing of the treatment landscape of multiple myeloma by novel agents, such as the use of potassium or linalidomide or imid base, or the combination of drugs together, and the target of multiple myeloma in the bone marrow microenvironment, uh, these uh, novel agents can overcome the conventional drug resistance, both in vitro and in vivo. And the novel agent also effective in relapse and refractory multiple myeloma, can be effective as induction of first line therapy and emerging role of a transplant and maintenance treatments. The treatment goals in multiple myeloma patients, we have to weigh the appropriate balance between treatment efficacy, toxicity, and cost. If the patient is fit, 
elderly patients such as the, the age is six, more than 65, or young patients with severe comorbidities, the goal is to prolong survival and ensure quality of life. Elderly patients is very elderly patients. Uh, the goal may be ensure quality of life and avoid unnecessary and costly treatment. For the young patients, the therapeutic scheme for curative intent is the ideal goal. To cure or to control disease. To cure as a treatment goal, the therapeutic aim is to achieve a complete remission and they use intensive upfront therapy to maximize the chance of achieving complete remission, which means that maybe longer progression-free survival and TTP. And we think that the CR may correlate with prolonged overall survival. Okay. For disease control as treatment goal, the therapeutic aim is to prolong overall survival and use intensive, less intensive and sequential approach to balance efficacy with the qualities of life. And leave reserve for the later salvage therapy for, the, for new drugs. And because uh, there is not all study support the correlation between complete remission and overall survival in the past. Okay. The action to achieve cure is to irradiate the tumor crown to maintain or to achieve the best possible response. But you have to remember that there is small numbers of rare tumor cells sometimes persist under the control of the immune system, such as the MCUS. So we have to uh, remember this to avoid overtreatment of the patients. We have to weigh the risk to consider the risk of the patients. This is the IMWG consensus recommendation on risk assessment. For the high risk patients, such as the high ISS stage, the uh, cytogenetic abnormalities, such as deletion 17P and translocation 414 or translocation 1416 or deletion 13, and other factors such as the IgA subtypes or extra medullary disease. The aim of induction therapy is to prevent a reversed end organ function, to minimize toxicity associated with induction regimen and induce deep responses. There are many regimens in uh, induction regimens. Uh, sometimes it's consisting of two drugs, such as bortezomib dexamethasone, or linalidomide dexamethasone, or thalidomide dexamethasone, or three drug combination as listed or four drug combinations. In order to approach, uh, uh, in order to achieve the complete remission, uh, the, the autos, uh, autologous stem cell transplantation has a role. Okay? In the ASCT setting, there is a, bo uh, a number of evidence that there is an association between optimal response in uh, complete remission or very good PR and long-term outcome with uh, in a uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. Uh, numerous prospective trials uh, show that there is some correlation, even also in the retrospective trials. Okay. There is a significant correlation between maximal response and outcome in the prospective and retrospective study. The incorporation of novel agents in the induction and post-transplant regimen has improved the outcome in the autologous stem cell transplant eligible patients. The incorporation of the novel agents improved the complete remission rate pre-transplant, association with uh, depth of more depth of response and overall survival. And in the post-transplant treatment, uh, it acts a role as a consolidation to improve the depth of response and maintenance. Uh, this graph shows numerous uh, uh, induct, uh, incorporation of the, such as in the novel agent, in this case the Velcad, uh, and improve whether pre or post uh, induction or uh, the post induction or post transplant increase in the number of very VGPR rate or the near CR rate. This happened because we want to achieve the depth of response that is enough 
to maintain the patient into the complete remission or that we all want to be cured. Okay. There is a number uh, uh, of uh, many levels of responses. Okay. Uh, uh, at the present time, we want the molecular CR or the immunophenotypic CR in order to reduce or less um, uh, minimal residual disease. Okay. The role of minimal residual disease evaluation with, uh, by the PCR, uh, uh, there are numerous uh, uh, trials to show this. Okay? Uh, the num uh, when the, the patient is MRD negative, that is a good prognostic. Okay? In order to measure the MRD other than the PCR, we can use the flow cytometries. With the difference between the myeloma, uh, myelomatous plasma cells and the normal plasma cells, uh, such as in this trial, when we can define that uh, the MRD negative and the MRD positive, that is a difference in the progression free survival and overall survival. And also, if we can maintain the CR for a long time, such as the, the graph show in the total therapy too, that if we can sustain the CR, okay, the, the patient has a better, rest, uh, better outcome. Okay. And also the maintenance therapy, as uh, Dr. Kwasibat said, uh, that is an approved only three drugs now for the taridomide and linaridomide and bortezomib or the combination of these two drugs okay, can also improve the outcome in the treatment of multiple myeloma. For example, the CLGB trials that uh, there is an increased TTP with linalidomide maintenance, okay, and the overall survival also increased with linalidomide maintenance. So the possibility of cure, in order to uh, achieve cure, in, in my opinion, is one to selection of the appropriate patients. For example, the young patients without comorbidities, with no adverse cytogenetic risk, and the use of combination and of novel agents during induction, and also the integration of autologous stem cell transplantation after induction, but this is a, quite a topic, okay, uh, the, uh, the next topic. In order to achieve more depth of uh, response, that is the depth of complete remission, and the goal is to achieve the immunophenotypic uh, response, okay, uh, in, uh, and use the, the novel agent in the consolidation and the maintenance therapies. For example, the phase one, two, two try of uh, combination of novel agents of renalidomide, uh, uh, velcate, and dexamethasone in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, such as the use of RVD, as in this, uh, show that a res uh, an impressive response with a median follow up of seven, around uh, two years, the median progression free survival and overall survival not reached with the increase in the progression-free survival, okay? And uh, there is no significant difference, okay? So the approach have, to therapy... Sorry, you have one yeah? minute to convince oh, yeah, us. Yeah. Okay, approach to therapy is to, uh, to do the ACT upfront or the novel agents, and then the uh, stem cell transplant at relapse, okay? We have to select the patients, the, the ongoing trial of uh, France and the uh, Dana Faber study is to randomize the patients to RVD, and one group is to do the stem cell transplantation upfront, and and then uh, maintenance the consolidation and maintenance, and uh, the other group is to call, uh, do the stem cell transplant later. The RVD induction is response is quite good. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, the new drugs, okay, the proteosome inhibitors. That is a, a phase one, two study of cofusimib 
with lanidomide and low-dose dexamethasone as frontline treatment for multiple myeloma. Okay, uh, that is a very good outcome. Okay, okay, the time is out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. but it's a very good outcome, and the paper just came out yesterday. Okay, but it is pre-published online on June. Okay, okay, that is uh, my last slides. Uh, uh, maybe the cure is not uh, the. Curative is not an ideal goal anymore if we, in the future we combine a lot of uh, novel therapy okay, with a multiple mechanism to treat the multiple myeloma patients. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.